reaction and analysis from our analysts who are going to give us their perspective in as far as some several sectors are concerned of the economy and according to the task group of the policy board for financial services and regulation run by the national treasury there's an estimated number of about one to three million smmes in south africa and according to a report released last year is about 2.44 million smmes that are operating in south africa excluding survivalists and micro businesses which we will get to in a moment but this number tends to a range of 250,000 to 650,000 enterprises which represent a 50% contribution to the GDP and even more to employment but as mentioned the South African economy is still struggling and it's difficult for SMMEs to thrive unless they will get some assistance from government now this is what we were talking about yesterday when we were discussing the expectations uh, of the budget today so I have with me in the studio uh, Karabo Mashuhani who is an expert in uh, the SMME sector to come and unpack for us what he thinks about the budget Karabo thank you very much for coming uh, thank you for having me back again all right yesterday you made an undertaking that you will come here to unpack this budget but before you do that can we paint a picture when we're talking about SMMEs what numbers and who, who, who are we speaking to in the country generally uh, well, I think in total you have about two and a half million uh, small businesses. A report came out last year from the Small Enterprise Development Agency. And, uh, you know, unfortunately of those businesses, about 1.3 million or so are owned by people without a metric. Uh, and when you juxtapose that with the unemployment figures where uh, unemployment for people without metric is more than 50%, I think it was around 56%, that gives you a situation where a lot of people without metric, for example, are then turning to, to run small businesses to try and survive and that's where the survivalist sort of figures that you quoted so, so will I be right if I get you the people who are running small businesses are those who are educated and those who have skills and uh, there are those who are not educated but are skilled in running those businesses say for example from their intuition uh, yes, and, and a lot of the times there isn't really the skill to run a business. It, it's, as we said yesterday, it's really uh, uh, out of desperation that, you know, if you have no income and you have no job and you've been looking for a job for a long time, you know, you're better off trying to sell tomatoes or whatever in your area than just sitting. And so a lot of them are informal businesses mm -hmm. and, and they're businesses that really have very low potential. Uh, and so... It was quite, it's quite encouraging when you saw in the budget the sort of allocation to education. There's about 111 uh, billion towards uh, assisting uh, education grants for higher education. Uh, and also we saw that there's about 30 billion uh, allocated to us building new schools okay. so all of that I think will become a feeder into this to ensuring that even our entrepreneurs are well skilled uh, to be able to face uh, you know the, the economy yeah so le le let's get directly into business incubation I believe that the intention of government is to ensure that uh, there is skills and experience fed into the establishment of those uh, SMMEs and various specializations of course mm -hmm. yes I mean it's critical I think we you know obviously running a business is a science you know as, as much as an, uh, there's a there's a there's a science to the art of, of of being an entrepreneur and i think the science has to be learned at school because there's diff different business models and how to deal with contracts etc that that people need to understand and so we 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 need to invest i think in the education of our entrepreneurs uh, and because when you look at for example the jsc you'll see that most of your ceos on the jsc are people with uh, either cas or they've got uh, mbas etc right and there's a reason for that that if without an education you can get so far but i think the better educated you are the more sort of empowered you are to then grow that business and employ mm -hmm. more people all right let's get into the numbers now uh, government has allocated 19.8 billion rent for industrial business incentives mm -hmm. of which 600 million has gone to the clothing and textile competitiveness program this has been a problem because uh, the fake imported goods were really chowing into the large portion of the industry of the textiles and, and clothing and costing jobs yeah you know it's a it's a very complicated problem because at the heart of it it's not uh, 
the, the, pref the preference for South Africans and our love for international brands and really when a lot of the times because of the economic situation, even when you see a South African made uh, a clothing item, people would rather buy a cheaper import than a South African made one. So it's one thing I think investing into the textile industry in the country, but I think a lot of work needs to be put and I think the president in the SONA mentioned the, the sort of buy black and buy local campaign that uh, the government needs to get behind, that we need to change the culture towards buying locally and so I, I think what is critical is that firstly in as we invest in these industrial zones and as government invests into different sectors to stimulate the, the, the economy and small businesses to identify firstly where we have a competitive advantage in the country in terms of the production but in terms of also market market access for these small businesses mm. so what do you make out of the 40 481.6 million rent allocated to uh, the cedars to expand the business incubation program and what does it mean for the Department of Small Business Development? Look, it's, it's an interesting thing. I think uh, one would, you know, currently CEDA falls under the Department of Small Business Development. And for it to, the budget to go directly to that, we know the President mentioned in the SONA that uh, the work in terms of reorganizing government is going to be finalized and should be ready for the, the sixth parliament when it comes in. Uh, and so we expect that there'll be a restructuring, especially in the in the uh, economic sort of uh, sector ministries in the government. and and. and so perhaps that is a clue for us as to what government is thinking about the Department of Small Businesses, uh, but I don't want to speculate too much. Well, I, well, I, even I, if you don't speculate, I, I, are you saying <laughs> that uh, the these are numbers for I, the department? I, 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 think it would be a, uh, I think it would be a terrible thing. I think the, we need to focus on small businesses. You mentioned in your intro that uh, small businesses contribute about 50% to the economy. Uh, in, in China, for example, they contribute 60% to the GDP, and they employ almost 99% of all the new jobs that are created. So we need a ministry that is focused really on small businesses. We need to strengthen it. I think the procurement spend within government, if we achieve the 30% that government has been talking about, we'll have around uh, 270 billion rand going to our small businesses in terms of market opportunities. The small business de department, I think, is well placed to then engage with those government departments and entities to ensure that that spend does go to small businesses and then providing them with capacity assistance towards uh, to ensure that they deliver. Yeah. But, but Karabo, you know, there's a thin line between small businesses and unemployment because we were talking about businesses that operate from hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier that those people, some of them operate due to desperation. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have a jobs fund, uh, which is, you know, vital for uh, job creation, and they are talking about 4.6 billion rent uh, for creating well over 200,000 jobs. Is that realistic in a medium term? Because I mean like job creation, if it's, it's something that we're gonna discuss in a year's time, what happens in the 11 months? Uh, well, it, it will be jobs created over that period, so it's not necessarily at the end of the period. So when you do the calculation, it's over that period. Look, I, 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 think, I think it is key. I think uh, the, the funds that come from the jobs fund, for example, enable incubators and other small business developers and even corporates to partner with the jobs fund uh, and normally it's done on a on a on a cost sharing basis to really invest in the in, in capacitating small businesses and lowering their operating costs and making them competitive so i think it is good a lot of the times it's very difficult to calculate exactly how many jobs are going to be created because that goes towards the, you know the growth sort of uh, uh, the, the, how quickly those small businesses grow and what sector they're in, whether it's labor intensive or not. Okay. So, uh, but the investment, I think, is crucial and I think it's very welcome. All right. Thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure. Karabo Mashuhani is an SMME expert talking to us about his views on uh, the budget as well as small businesses. Uh, back to Peter.